Right, I'm going to start this vlog on one of my local favourite walks down to the river. Holding the phone, no mic, no wind suppressor. Hopefully though, by the end of this vlog, we're going to be using a bit of better tech and we'll see how different it gets and we'll be in another part of the country having a couple of days off. Fingers crossed it will be so. It's just really bit me, but I have to say, <laughs> I have to say, Come on, Dave, get it together. Ah, oh, Devil's Coach Horse. They seem so much bigger when I was a kid. Look at that, it's bit me. Venomous fangs, I reckon. Oh, blimey. Stinging. Can't believe it got through my fingers as an adult, especially my gnarly eczema fingers. How crazy is that? Haven't seen one for years. A great find of my childhood and their lava under rocks. The predatory Devil's Coach Horse Beetle. A big rove beetle. Vietnamese blue beauty snake. One of my pairs went to a new home in the spring because I don't want to produce as many snakes this year, but what an amazing clutch of eggs from this one female. I've just got one pair now. Look at that. It's just the most amazing sight. You wouldn't believe it, would you? Look, so those eggs are all oh, three quarters of the size of a, a big chicken's egg. Absolutely amazing, and in, in you know, probably about 60 days, there's going to be blue beauties hatched from those eggs that are going to be perfect mini replicas of their parents. Some will be the more blue phase, and some will be like the dad, the more green phase. Equally as beautiful, a fantastic clutch of eggs, lovely to see. And of course, then she can go, she's going to have a feed up, have a good drink. And then she's going to go back outside until October with the male in a huge seven foot, be three foot, be six foot wide enclosure where she can really climb around and get some natural sunlight. So only in here, in here, as a, a breeding, nice sort of hidey, moist hole. But here, people say, oh, there's no water. There isn't any water. Often, it's best to take the water away a day or so before your snake's due to lay her eggs because sometimes they'll lay them in the tight corner of the water bowl and all the eggs will be drowned by the time you find them. Vietnamese blue beauty and a beautiful, beautiful clutch of eggs. I'm here with Steve Capel. He's brought me a copy of his book. Highly recommended. I've not read it yet and I'm going to do a review on this book soon on the channel. But something for me to read when I get a couple of hours downtime. Steve, thanks so much. You're very welcome, Dave. This guy Thank here, you. he feeds our birds, he brings them food. He's a lifetime worker in the countryside. I've known him since I was a little boy. Uh, first lurchers I ever saw were Steve's, but I'm going to really enjoy reading this book, and I'll tell you all about it. those gates sealed off by nature this puddle's been here a while 
only for the pond skaters. But even <laughs> water beetles, diving beetles. Look at that. Wow. So how do the pond skaters and the diving beetles get here? Well, they fly and they can see the reflection of water as they're flying at night and almost always fly at night like a lot of aquatic insects and when we spread our plastic on farmland to warm crops up in the spring and even solar panels lots of these things are drawn to that reflection only to land with a thud and no habitat at all Yeah. Hold on, let's look at the animals. So the name of my email address, <laughs> the Viper's Bugloss, one of my favourite grassland plants. First time I really saw them was local field that got burnt in a grass fire and then these grew up everywhere. Probably not germinated from seed for decades. There's a baby one, look, oh, last year's. Mm -hmm. Hang on, isn't it? Oh, yeah, there's big ones under here. Another pair, male and female. Quite interesting. female there with the dark sides and a pinstripe. I do vary a lot, but it gives you some idea. And the male doesn't have those real notable dark sides. A much grayer color without such a pinstripe. All right. This is Royden Common a real wildlife sanctuary. A lot of it you can't actually access legally, um, as in it's shut off for nesting birds, of which there are many kinds of ground nesting birds here. Lapwing, curlew, as well as the usual woodland birds and the beautiful song of the skylarks off the grassland and meadowland. Not seeing any snakes today, but several slow worms under old bits of tin and a couple of refuges, for sure. Interestingly, the slow worms apart from a young one, all paired up, single pairs, males and females, quite interesting.
We live in the van life. Sunny, honey, fish and chips and live music. Blue, blue. <laughs> Male as well. Watch out for Vanessa, see if there's any dancing. Watch it. How easy is that got buoyancy? That's crazy, isn't it? See its beautiful colours. How buoyant is that? That's just got lift off that thermal in like a second, hasn't it? We moved house three years ago to a little bit more rural and near a river. The abundance of insect life and therefore bats and birds really, really has been noticeable. But here on a little heat well, quite a big heathland, have a look, in Norfolk, with some woodland around and about. It's just another world, just beautiful. The sun's out, it's quite early morning. Amazing spiders and insects. Just trod on a rabbit, which is something that has not happened around my way much. But yeah, amazing. Seeing a male hen harrier just catch a little thermal in, in a millisecond, get height, and then just use that height to glide across the landscape from one place to the other. Just astounding. There are adders here. I've never been here enough to see them, but let's have a quick look. But although it's early, we're getting back. We're getting back actually for our little caravan do some more reading, catching up on some books, because Fen, 14 and a half years old, it's actually just getting too hot. Well, Jackie's just gone in back in the woods and we've literally just walked a couple of hundred yards. Got to look after the old dogs when it's warm. But a different world. And Norfolk, as you know, if you keep up with these logs, is definitely our place of solace, heal our minds and relax. And to be honest with you, it's vast. There's so much of it, like here, there's no one around. It's just ridiculous. Public access here. There's so much undiscovered places in Norfolk. Once you're off the sort of the beaten track, so many beautiful villages and areas from Heath, dry Heathland, Lots of woodland to the beautiful waterways of the fens and the broads. Anyway, I'm going to have five more minutes. Oh, look at it. There's nobody here. Just the sound of a yellow hammer and a buzzing bee. Yeah. It's been a beautiful blue sky since about half past four this morning. Just gone the longest day of the year, which always makes me sad. Winter's coming. But also, I just can't get a handle on this tech. So I spent yesterday um, 
working out how to use that gimbal properly. I've got the hang of it now to actually use it. But we just popped out again. The phone's always in my pocket, yours with me if I need you. But obviously having to, sounds silly, just get the microphone out, plugged in, get the gimbal out, carry it around. I didn't even think about it. So it's something I've got to make a habit. Doing these vlogs, if you go back to the original, original channel, since when COVID came along, and it's all been just about raw and you with me when I'm around and what I can see, taking you along. Just getting the phone out and filming as we go. Very rough and off the cuff, but real life. So I have got to do a little bit more planning. Bear with me. At least I've watched some tutorials. <laughs> now if like me, you've only ever learnt the basic bird songs, because like me, you're a bit rubbish. <laughs> That Merlin app, it's not always correct, but very interesting. I'll definitely download it, it's a free app. And just stop when you hear the birds singing, put it on. Interesting to see. And it's also reminding me of stuff that I did know that I'd long since forgotten. So I was telling Jackie that the chiff chaff, it sings chiff chaff, chiff chaff, which it clearly does when you listen to it. Oh, I'm in a bog. And of course the yellow hammer, a little bit of bread and cheese. When you hear it again and remind yourself, it's not that hard to learn these things. You just gotta, a bit like the gimbal, you just gotta practice. Get out there and listen. But the app will certainly remind you or tell you what you're listening to. There's your driving force of our ecosystems right there. Insects and other invertebrates. And my God, have we reduced their numbers way too low. One thing about coming to Norfolk at any time of the year, it takes us away from our busy lives. We say to people like, we're really, really busy. And people like looking like, yeah, we're busy. We are massively busy physically and mentally, mentally especially, I think. And when you're in the thick of it, it's just life and you carry on and you just get stuff done. But when you come away and you're surrounded by insects buzzing and bird song and beautiful views and you're too far away to do your work, it does always make us want to reassess our lives. Um, remember the old series, if you were with me, The Good Life, where quite wealthy to do couple took up a small holding or made their garden into one and they tried to live off the land, if you like. That's much, much harder than people ever imagine. In fact, getting away from actually spending money is almost impossible nowadays. But for sure, yeah, there's got to be a middle ground. It's over there somewhere. I'll be doing a book review on this on my other channel, Falconry. What a brilliant book. Someone's lifelong memories of being out with birds of prey. Well worth a review. Horses terrify me. Cows are second.
So back where I started, um, no wind today, so you can hear me, no gimbal and no microphone after all that. So the gimbal definitely needs a bit more practice. Um, but yeah, I can see the benefits of that, but I can see the benefit, benefits of it more for when we're presenting something on the channel or even on my other channel, Full Career, or even on the Snakes Plus channel, where I need my hands free. I want to show you something, uh, present it to you, but show you what's going on with my hands free. That gimbal can be mounted on a tripod. It's AI uh, image recognition or follow me around. So that would be really good. Uh, and obviously then I've got a microphone on so you can still hear me or hear me in the wind. But the latest iPhone we're using now, it's changed from the, what's it called? The lightning lead, if you like. The microphone plug-in bit that goes in, the receiver that goes into the phone is lightning. So now I've got to get a little bit of kit to adapt it to the phone. So back where we started, having had the most wonderfully relaxing weekend away, as yeah, as good as it could get for relaxing, we really needed that. Massive thanks, massive thanks to the whole crew at Icarus Fulkery that picked up the baton and basically did our weekends that Jackie and I normally try and do. That's our job. So yeah, thanks guys. And I'll see you in the next one.